Yesterday, Microsoft had their big inside Xbox event, showcasing some brand new upcoming games for the Xbox Series X. This gave us a sneak peek at a bunch of different third party titles, including some never before seen world reveals. Pretty exciting stuff, and I wanna dive into everything that we saw at the event, what I liked, what I didn't, but uh, first, Let's talk about gameplay. <laughs> For the past week, Microsoft has been teasing the event, specifically touting that we would be getting our first look at next-gen gameplay for the Xbox Series X, which I think reasonably had everyone pretty excited. If you check out their Twitter feed over the past seven days, we get things like this. Check out first look next-gen gameplay from our global developer partners within Inside Xbox on Thursday, May 7th at 8 a.m. Look at Xbox Series X gameplay from our global developer partners. Watch Inside Inside Xbox for a first look at next generation gameplay. It's time for your first look at next gen gameplay. Awesome, I'm pumped. Couldn't wait to watch the event. We sit down, we get into the event, and even during it, they keep telling us. You're gonna see today the first ever Xbox Series X gameplay from our partners around the world. I'll spare you the suspense. There was no actual gameplay. There wasn't nothing, there was just hardly anything. Mostly, it was all in-engine cinematics, with the occasional bit of a HUD-less quote-unquote gameplay, which we all know isn't what real gameplay actually looks like. Not a big deal by itself. Like, I'm totally cool with seeing some in-engine cutscenes or highlights of a game, especially if it's something that's brand new, right? Like, it's cool to see new games. But just... Why, why, why were they constantly telling us that we were gonna be getting a first look at next-gen gameplay and then proceed to give us basically none of that? Honestly, I'm not here to focus on this. It's not the biggest of deals in my opinion. It's also not the hottest of takes. Pretty much everyone has his opinion. Everyone on the internet complaining. I'm sure there's gonna be thousands of videos saying where's the gameplay from the Xbox event. And I understand, um, I think it's for good reason. Like I was annoyed too, and I couldn't not mention how hilarious it was. That they were non-stop saying, come check out this gameplay, and then showed us no gameplay. And for what it's worth, we did get an apology last night from the Xbox marketing GM saying, clearly we set some wrong expectations, and that's on us, and that they promised they'll try to do better in the future. Let's get on to the main point of the video. Like, how was the actual event? And, you know, while we didn't get much gameplay, we did get a look at 13 brand new games coming to the Xbox Series X, as well as other platforms, because keep in mind, these are all third party party titles, so it's not just coming to the Xbox Series X. And you know what? Many of them looked pretty cool. So I want to go over the event as a whole, what happened, what we saw, and what I liked. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Summoner's War. This is the classic turn-based RPG for mobile devices, where you collect monsters, build a team, and utilize unique strategies to clear dungeons. The game features over a thousand different monsters to collect with tons of powerful summons to find. There are global PV PvP arenas, weekly in-game events, and a customizable Sky Island. Summoner's War has a large worldwide community with over 110 million installs, and they're currently celebrating their six-year anniversary by giving away 100 free mystical scrolls. Check out the link in the description below to download the game and claim your own free summons. All right, so what did we see at the Inside Xbox event? Well, they started off actually talking about Xbox Game Studios themselves and some of the first-party projects that that they're working on. They talked about how, as we expect, lots of people working from home, and it's been a challenge, but production has still been moving forward, and that they will be showing us first-party gameplay at the event that they do in July. But to yesterday's event was all focused on third-party games. So, what are the games that we saw? Well, the very first game they showcased was this title called Bright Memory Infinite, which they say is a lightning-fast fusion of the FPS and action genres that combines a wide variety of skills and abilities with the ability to unlock unleash dazzling combo attacks. All of this set in a sprawling futuristic metropolis in the year 2036. Trailer starts off with some basic looking FPS gameplay. There's some parkour and wall running. And then all of a sudden they break into like this medieval style sword combat, which I was not expecting and really impressed by honestly. And then at the very end of the trailer, the dude calls in a muscle car. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I think what's most impressive of everything, when I was first watching this trailer, I was like, eh, like it's flat and everything, but something about it feels like a little off, a little unpolished. Well, turns
turns out the entire thing was made by a single person, and they kind of use this as a catalyst to talk about how developers are using some Xbox tech. I don't know what that means specifically, but they're using Xbox related tech to make impressive things. And don't know if it's gonna end up being a good game, but it was a cool trailer and an impressive uh, showcase, if nothing else. The next title they showed was Dirt 5, a new chapter in the legacy of Dirt. You'll be traveling the globe, taming the most incredible off-road machines with your friends and being a part of a vibe that delivers big on epic action period. What is, I don't know, the way they describe games, I swear. It's a racing game. It's a new Dirt game. I know a lot of people love this franchise. I've heard pretty good things about Dirt as a whole when it comes to like the racing racing genre. Uh, in the trailer, they showed off a lot of different vehicles and locations, weather effect seasons. I feel like with every racing game, it's almost the same. I know that's not true. I know I'm being reductive, but racing games just aren't my thing. So this one doesn't pique my interest so much. I'm sure Dirt fans will be excited, I would assume anyways. Uh, moving on, we saw a trailer for this title called Scorn, an atmospheric first person horror adventure game. This was terrifying. It's a very dark and grim setting on this like organic looking ship with organic matter all over the floors and walls. I, I was actually getting a very like Aliens vibe, the movie franchise. And then they show these like skinless creatures made out of just bone and sinew and muscle. Was, the whole thing was very, very, very creepy. And actually apparently this game has been playable for a while because people were telling me that there's already a ton of gameplay footage on YouTube for this title. So I'm sure you could get some pretty good impressions of what this is. But the trailer, suffice it to say, the trailer completely freaked me out. Uh, moving on, we've got a game called Chorus. This is a space flight combat shooter. Uh, they say you can unlock devastating weapons and mind bending abilities in a true evolution of the space combat shooter. Explore breathtaking interstellar vistas, ancient temples, and venture beyond our waking reality. Uh, you know, the trailer shows a lot of like flying ships through space debris. There was this like lady who was connected to the sentient ship and they showed all this like mind powers and stuff. I'm not sure. In fact, when I I first actually was reading the name of the game, I thought it was Corvs because that's clearly a V and not a U, but by the title of the video and the description, it's supposed to be Chorus. I, they're just, it's stylistic, but I was very confused. That's my only point. I get confused often. Uh, moving on, we've got Madden 21. It's football. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> they took some time to dive into like the history of the Madden franchise and stuff. Very excited for everyone who likes football and enjoys football games. I just could not care any less. So moving on to Bloodlines 2. This trailer could really creeped me the hell out. Initially when I was watching, I thought this was a, um, I thought this was like a serial killer game before I figured out it was Bloodlines. And Bloodlines, it's a vampire game. So they say, enter the world of darkness and rise through vampire society. Experience Seattle, a city full of alluring, dangerous characters and factions. Uh, you are dead now, but stronger, quicker, more alluring, and with potential for so much more. You get to choose to be brutal and unflinching or cultured and seductive using charm, cunning, terror, and sheer will to rise through vampire society, what monster will you be? I've heard many, many good things about uh, the Vampire Masquerade, and I know a lot of people are very excited about Bloodlines 2. That trailer, just like the Scorn one, really freaked me out that the intro scene was, it was terrifying. It was genuinely terrifying. I was uh, unsettling. Maybe that's the better word. I wasn't like having a heart attack, but it, I was very unsettled. Uh, let's move on to a game by the name of Call of the Sea, which is considered an otherworldly adventure game. This is set in 1930s South Pacific, and we'll be exploring a lush island paradise and puzzle out the secrets of a lost civilization in the hunt for your husband's missing expedition. This appears to be a exploration puzzle game, probably a relatively slow pace. It's going to be more about uncovering the mystery of the island. And again, you know, you're fine trying to find your husband's missing expedition. I'm going to assume it didn't turn out well. Let's just put it that way. Next up, we've got The Ascent, a solo and co-op action RPG set in a cyberpunk world. The mega corporation that owns you and every everyone has just collapsed. Can you survive without it? This is a top-down shooter that's all about fighting for a resistance as far as I can tell. It's, you know, in this dystopian cyber future. Yeah, it looks like it's a top-down joystick shooter. It's, it's probably good for 10 or so hours of action. I'm making a judgments that I can't make, but you know, you know what kind of game it is. It seems okay, I guess. Uh, next game actually looks really, really interesting. This is called The Medium. It's a next gen psychological horror game. You play as a medium living in two worlds, the real and the spirit one. Haunted by a vision of a child's murder, you travel to an abandoned hotel resort, which years ago became the stage of an unthinkable tragedy. There you begin your search for difficult answers. Trailer was really impressive. Very, very 
very cool ambiance and scene setting. Like they show this lady slowly going crazy and then there's like giant monsters appearing in the background. Apparently for this game as well, they're working with the music composer of the Silent Hills franchise. And the developer of the medium as well has a decent pedigree of making uh, games of this vein. So um, this is probably gonna be one to keep an eye on if you're interested in psychological horror. Next up, we've got Scarlet Nexus. Looks pretty cool. I don't know if it's my cup of tea, but this is like an anime action adventure game from Bandai Namco. Set in a far distant future, humanity's last hope falls into the hands of an elite group of psionic soldiers who battle an invincible threat known as others. Unravel the mysteries of a brain punk future? I've never heard brain punk before. That's a new one for me. Caught between technology and psychic abilities. So yeah, action adventure Bandai Namco game. They've got this really cool design for the enemies. They're like these floral half lady, half plant monster things. The trailer had a ton of style, really impressive. Again, it's one of those things where I don't know if I'm gonna be into this particular game, but I can certainly see the appeal and this looks pretty darn good. I think Bandai Namco in general tends to be a fairly safe bet or at the very least, you know if you like Bandai Namco games essentially. Um, so again, this is probably one to keep an eye on. Now the next game, I don't know if it's gonna be good, but I am very excited. This is called Second Extinction. So what the trailer starts off, it's like a first person shooter, second on an alien planet, not sure what's going on. And then halfway through, dinosaurs, yes. So apparently this is a three player co-op FPS where you work as a team to take down large groups of savage mutated dinosaurs. Fight through a maelstrom of bullets, bombs, teeth, claws, and gore. It's up to you to reclaim earth. It is a three player dinosaur hunting game. That could just be really awful. It certainly has the potential. We've seen dino multiplayer games in the past that did not turn out well. Uh, visually this game at the very least looks good. I'm not sure you know, how, the, how the game's gonna play. I mean, we're not sure about any of these games, but just looking at the trailer, this game really gives a strong like double A vibe. I don't think it's gonna have the polish and the and the content that you expect from a triple A title, but that does not mean it couldn't still be a fun romp with friends. And you know what? You throw dinosaurs in the game, I'm immediately I'm interested. <laughs> All right, next game, Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm gonna say this very wrong, I'm sorry. Become Ishaban Kasuga, a low-ranking Yakuza grunt left on the brink of death by the man he trusted most. Take up your legendary bat and get ready to crack some underworld skulls in dynamic RPG combat set against the backdrop of modern day Japan. Looks very cool. I just have never dipped my toes in the Yakuza franchise. I'm pretty linear with a lot of the games that I play to be very honest. I don't stray for my track very often. But again, like some of the other titles I've talked about here, that does not mean I don't understand the appeal and this game if this game looks good. Final game to talk about today, it is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Of course, this is the new Assassin's Creed Viking game. I made an entire video dedicated to this uh, about a week or so ago when they first revealed it. And this was the event that they've been teasing ever since that they said this would be the first time we'd be getting a look at some gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Well, they open up with what's clearly some cinematic footage. It's not gameplay, but you know, whatever. It's in engine. Looks cool. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. There was no gameplay. At no point in the trailer was there any gameplay. Assassin's Creed told us that we would be getting gameplay at this event, and that's not what we got. We did get likely in engine, cinematic cameras panning, slow motion, all that garbage. No gameplay. Like, I want to see behind my character. I want to see them moving around the world and doing things, you know, like what it looks like when you play the game. Gameplay, what, I just don't understand why this was so difficult. <laughs> I don't want to fix it on this too much, but yeah, I'm probably going to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's no doubt. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I loved Origins and Odyssey. I had a ton of fun, put a ton of hours into both those games. Just, just stop calling it gameplay when you're not showing us gameplay. So that's all of the games, 13 games in total. Let's break it down here. Starting off with the things that I am genuinely excited for and I could see myself playing. Bright Memory Infinite. I'm just, I, I have to, I'm just so interested in a game developed by one person that looks that good, Graphically. Second Extinction, it's dinosaurs. I gotta take a look. It could be garbage, but whatever. The medium I'm interested in, the psychological horror games I've dabbled with in the past, and this looks like it could be a good one. And then again, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's pretty much no question that I will play this thing. I would just like to see some gameplay at some point, if you guys don't mind. Okay, so the next games that seem good, but might not be for me, Bloodlines 2, probably a safe bet, Scarlet Nexus and Scorn. Those are games that, you know, I think we could safely assume will be decent games. Next couple of games, 
games, I'm not so sure about. These could be pretty bad. The Ascent, it just, yeah, that trailer wasn't that great looking. Chorus, I don't know about space combat games. Do people really just want to fly a ship through space debris in 2020? And Call of the Sea, that I think that one could have been bumped up to the previous tier. Um, maybe that's not going to be bad, but again, I just there's an uncertainty there. And then the final few games, they're just not for me, like straight up. Dirt 5, you know what? Actually, that probably, Dirt 5 belongs and seems good. I'm sure that's going to be a good game, but just zero interest for me. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, I'm just not into that series. And Madden Football, I just haven't cared since I was 12. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I know it's, uh, it's, it's just living the gamer life, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, like some pretty neat looking games here. I think overall the event, I would say, was a success in that we got to see some new games, but I'm not exactly blown away. I got to be honest here. Like this is not what I expected when they said we're going to be getting a first look and next gen games. Like there are some cool stuff. Some of these I will certainly play, but I'm not seeing any boundaries being pushed here, uh, which I think is what we assume and expect that we're going to get when we hear next gen being used. I feel like a good half of these titles that we got showcased here, they feel like not triple A games. Like they feel like double A games. They feel like lower budget games. Now we got to keep in mind again, this was the third party event in July. We are getting the first party Microsoft titles. So maybe that, you know, maybe when we see Halo Infinite and stuff, maybe that's when we're going to be th seeing them talk about some ideas and gameplay concepts that kind of push the envelope a bit. I also don't know how much I expect, you know, things don't change that much from generation to generation, really. A anyways, uh, the best part of all though is like the final the final segment of this event, they even thank the devs for showing off so much gameplay. I want to give a special thank you to all of our developers from around the world who pulled out all the stops to share this first look at Xbox Series X gameplay. I just couldn't, I could not, I could. I can't. What are you talking about? What game? What are you thinking? Listen, thank the devs for going through this effort. I am absolutely sympathetic to the fact that them putting this event together with everyone working from home was no doubt more difficult than it would have been if things were normal. Like we probably would have gotten quite a different presentation of these games and maybe even more games or higher quality games if it weren't for things being the way that they are right now. Even gameplay side, like I said, I'm not really blown away by a good chunk of of what we're seeing here. So that is the event wrapped up. That's what I liked, what I didn't like, what happened, and that whole gameplay thing. I've just People are gonna still be complaining about that for weeks to come, I'm sure. I, I think it's justifiable. I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm, it's just, it's a bit annoying, right? Yeah, <laughs> all right. That's it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.